So I'm Kelsey, and I am arguing on the negative side that, or on the case that the FBI wants Apple to make encryption, and that Apple says no. I agree that Apple is saying no. Um, so the first supporting claims that the affirmative said was that um, that we're not able to access the data, and that that's bad for our nation. Um, and they said that criminals are able to keep the information, and we, as the authority, are, can't access that. Um, there are other ways of accessing it, like he said, with a third party. Um, the third party, like, it, it was unknown which third party um, did it, but in an article a year after San Bernardino um, by NPR, written by Lena Seljuk, I probably butchered her name, but um, she quoted that the FBI ended up paying a third party to unlock the iPhone, and they didn't need Apple to create a new software. Um, and speaking of the fact that Apple would have to create an entirely new software, um, there were cases, there was a case in, um, I believe it was the 80s? Let me see. Yeah, it was the 80s. Let me see. There was a case in the 80s where it was with the telephone <laughs> company, and the FBI was asking them to wiretap their wires so they could listen in on the phone calls that were happening. Um, and that telephone company didn't want to let the FBI have that information, but they, like, they told the FBI, you should just put in your own wire cords. Um, but the, the court ruled that the telephone company should let them do it because they already have the capability and that it would like, harm the case for the FBI. So in that case, the court ruled that because the telephone company already had the, the software to let the FBI use it, that it was um, in the FBI's, FBI's favor for them to do that. But in this case, um, in, yeah, in this case, February 2016, Apple didn't have the, the software. Like, they would have to create new, entirely new software for the older iPhone, the iPhone 5C that the San Bernardino shooter had, just to see if um, there were, like, communications between terrorists. Um, and the evidence from an article, so did the FBI find anything on the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone from Fortune? Um, they, Robert Hackett said that soon after breaking into the iPhone used by one of the San Bernardino shooters, the Fed said they had found nothing of value, no substantial leads stored on the, mm -hmm. on the device, an unnamed source in intimated that investigators had found no links between the male shooter and overseas terrorists. They discovered no communications between him and terror cells during an unaccounted 18 minutes after the massacre. In essence, they learned nothing new. Um, so, yeah, that was on the part of <coughs> new software. Um, the second supporting that legislation should be implemented to prevent it. Um, this is an argument on the fact that Apple and other technology companies are like warrant proofing their software. Um, so um, the benefits of the benefits of this don't weigh, outweigh the outcome. In an article from Scrib D, written by Jordan Golson, enforcing this decision could make it mandatory for U.S. tech companies to build hacks for governments. And even if that company uh, disagrees with it, it would weaken cybersecurity for millions of Americans in the process. And the affirmative had argued that um, not being able to access data is bad, but it's actually better because it protects our data. And um, in the letter that Apple wrote themselves, they were saying how software can't be applied to only one iPhone. Like they could say that it's only gonna be applied to one iPhone, but it could get into the wrong hands and like anything could be hacked. Um, the quote from Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, is once created, the techni technique could be used over and over again on any number of devices. In the physical world, it would be the equivalent of a master key capable of opening hundreds of millions of locks from restaurants and banks to stores and homes. No reasonable person would find that acceptable. Um, so that's why it, it would be it wouldn't be good for uh, our nation for this to happen. Um, also, it would harm the product. In an article by The Guardian, um, 
Spencer Ackerman writes, companies should comply with warrants to the extent that they're able to do so, but no company should be forced to deliberately weaken its products, and that's what Apple would be doing with their, bro um, with their product. Um, And on the fact that it should be with the American people, not the companies, um, it's in Apple's interest to protect their consumers. Like one of their main um, like points of their company is to protect their products and the people who are consuming and using their products. Um, and if Apple said yes to the American government to creating this backdoor, it would be like a blueprint for international companies and international, or not international companies, international countries, sorry, like Russia and China, to be able to um, make Apple make backdoors for their um, phones in their countries so, they, so that those countries could hack into their um, citizens' phones. Yeah, the article where that's from is also from The Guardian, and it, uh, Spencer Ackerman quoted that this move by the FBI could snowball around the world. Why in the world would our government want to give repressive, repressive regimes in Russia and China a blueprint for forcing American companies to create a backdoor? And that was a quote from Senator Ron, Ron Wyden of Oregon. Um, and that is my part of the speech. <laughs>